Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. IRS Hurricane Ian victims in Florida qualify for tax relief. October 17th deadline. Other dates extended to February 15th. Honestly, the Fed is giving relief to Florida. I don't even believe it. Let's read on to see what kind of exception the administration's put in the small print. I'm guessing it'll go something like this. Because Hurricane Ian is clearly an Eastern sounding name, we have determined that the hurricane actually identifies as a typhoon. And because typhoons are not currently covered under our hurricane relief plan, Florida, you're on your own. I'm sorry, I mean, if it were actually a hurricane, we would totally be there for help. But uh, given the circumstances, there's, there's just nothing we can do. This announced as the administration's representatives based in Florida take off from the airstrip bound for DC. Floridians attempting to flee the storm clinging to the wheel wells of the plane as it takes off. The pilot shaking his fist, yelling out the window at the Floridians. That's what you get for going red. Honestly, the administration hates to sacrifice the woke mouse in the process down there in Disney World. But from a utilitarian perspective, it's all for the greater good as we progressively march towards utopia. Next and finally up at the global warming conference. And last but not least, the President Biden will lecture us about energy policy. This is one that I like to call Star Wars toast because that is last but not least. It has a light side and a dark side. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between. Ladies, gentlemen, and alternative high school graduates. Je President Biden. What's that? Okay, okay, I hear you. I hear you, and I just want you to know that my only goal. Uh, uh, okay, okay, I hear you, crowd. I hear you. Is to be able to help you better. And you being honest with me. Well, and I agree. President Biden is least. That's helping me do that. I'm not going to stand up here as your host and lie to you, okay? So let me let me try again. Let, let, let me try again. And with my introduction so I can get it right this time. Next up, ladies, gentlemen, and all intentionally ambiguous pronouns present. Ladies, gentlemen, and alternative high school graduates. Is President Biden, who is both last and least. And here we are, least but not last. Okay, but still, uh, don't leave yet or anything. But right now, don't leave. I'm sure he won't fall asleep this time in the middle of, like, you know, lying to us. IR 2022-168, September 29, 2022, Washington. Hurricane Ian victims throughout Florida now have until February 15, 2023 to file various federal, individual, and business tax returns and make tax payments, the Internal Revenue Service announced today. The IRS is offering relief to any area designated by the Federal Emergency Management Agency. That's going to be FEMA. There's a link to FEMA here. This means that individuals and households that reside or have a business anywhere in the state of Florida qualify for tax relief. The current list of eligible localities is always available on the disaster relief page on irs.gov. There's a link to that here. So they didn't give me a list of localities that I'm going to be listing out, which is quite embarrassing most of the time because I can't pronounce the names, but they're here. So you can check them out. There'll be a link to this in the description and you can link over to the disaster relief page to look up more detail. So the tax relief postpones various tax filing and payment deadlines that occurred starting on September 23rd, 2022. As a result, affected individuals and businesses will have until February 15th, 2023 to file returns and pay any taxes that were originally due during this period. This means individuals who had a valid extension to file their 2021 return due to run out on October 17th, 2022, will now have until February 15th, 2023 to file. The IRS noted, however, that because tax payments related to these 2021 returns were due on April 18th, 2022, those payments are not eligible for this relief. So there's a difference between the penalties and interest that they hit you with 
when you have a late filing versus the penalties and interest they hit you with when there's a late payment. And in order to avoid, the, to avoid getting hit with the late payment penalty, you still possibly have to pay because that happened you know, when the tax return was originally due. But if you filed the extension, then you have until October 17th to file generally with the extension. And now if there's an extended time frame, you have that extended uh, time frame from there to February 15th, 2023. So the February 15th, 2023 deadline also applies to quarterly estimated income tax payments due on January 17th, 2023, and the quarterly payroll and excise tax returns normally due on October 31st, 2022, and January 31st, 2023. Businesses with an original or extended due date also have the additional time, including, among others, calendar year corporations whose 2021 extensions run out on October 17, 2022. Similarly, tax-exempt organizations also have the additional time, including for 2021 calendar year returns with extensions due to run out on November 15, 2022. In addition, Penalties on payroll and excise tax deposits due on or after September 23rd, 2023 and before October 10th, 2022 will be abated, removed in essence, as long as the deposits are made by October 10th, 2022. The Disaster Assistance and Emergency Relief for Individuals and Businesses page with that exceedingly long name has a link to it right here if you want to check it out. It has details on other returns, payments, and tax-related actions qualifying for additional time. The IRS automatically provides filing and penalty relief to any taxpayer with an IRS address of record located in the disaster area. So. If you have your address in there, you shouldn't have to take any other action at this point. They should apply it automatically based on your address. Therefore, taxpayers do not need to contact the agency to get the tax relief. So they, they say that as, it's, as, as if it's a favor to you, but really they don't like talking to you really. So that's to, please don't call us is what they're kind of saying. But in any case, they should apply it automatically. However, if an affected taxpayer receives a late filing or late payment penalty notice from the IRS that has an original or extended filing payment or deposit due date falling within the postponement period, the taxpayer should call the number on the notice to have the penalty abated. So they should apply it automatically, in other words. But if you get a penalty and, and it's in the time frame that should have been applied to and they didn't apply it then, then you got to contact the IRS and say, hey, you know, you're supposed to do this automatically. What is this letter? What are you doing? What's going on? But do it cordially so that you can fix the problem and not just go crazy on some IRS person that just doesn't know. In any case, in addition, the IRS will work with any taxpayer who lives outside the disaster area, but whose records necessary to meet a deadline occurring during the postponement period are located in the affected area. So if you have like paperwork in the affected area, but your address is outside of it, then you might still qualify for the relief, but the IRS can't apply it automatically in that case because they think your address is outside the record. So how would they know how to do that? So you gotta contact them in that case. Taxpayers qualified for relief, for relief who live outside the disaster area need to contact the IRS at 866-562-5227. I won't say that a hundred times because there will be a link to this in the description and you can look it up there. This also includes workers assisting the relief activities who's, who are affiliated with a recognized government or philanthropic organization. Philanthropic, I'm starting to like that word more now that I have to say it all, but philanthropic, philanthropic doesn't even sound like English to I don't know where that comes from is that like Latin or so I don't know any what just keep reading just keep going in individuals and businesses in a federally declared disaster area who suffered uninsured or unreimbursed disaster related losses can choose to claim them on either the return for the year the loss occurred in this instance 2022 return normally filed next year or return for the prior year 2021. So this is the question you got to ask if you're going to have like a deduction on your income tax return. Do you want to claim it in the year that happened, which would be in 2022 for this particular disaster, but then you wouldn't actually get the benefits from it till you file the return next year by April 15th of 2023 typically. And because of the disaster, it might've lowered your income because you might be dealing with the disaster for half the year 
at this point in time or the last part of the year here the last few four months or something of the year so if that's the case your income might be lower and because we have a progressive income tax system then getting a like a deduction in a lower income year might not be as beneficial if you got the deduction in like a higher income year so then you might want to take it and put it to the last year which in this case would be 2021 where you might have had more income now if you haven't filed 2021 because you're on extension then you could file 2021 and determine if you want to take it there but if you have already filed 2021 then you might have to think about whether or not it'd be worthwhile to amend 2021 if you have the capacity to do that uh, and those are the options so be sure to write the the fema declaration number that's dr4673fl i won't say that a hundred times because again link description check it out on your own uh, so it's not you got to put that on any term any return where you're claiming the loss so the irs knows what you're doing so see publication 547 for details there's a link to that here so the tax relief is part of a coordinated federal response to the damage caused by hurricane ian and is based on local damage assessments by fema so i didn't see anything in the small print that says the administration is going to stop they're going to go through with it this time they're going to do the right thing i'm surprised but good for them for information on disaster recovery you can visit disasterassistance.gov there's a link to that here so you could check that out and there'll be a link to all this other stuff as well and there'll be a link to this in the description